Hello everyone, do a new video today. Do a little different, maybe we'll do this upstairs here today uh, since I'm home alone and it's really hot outside. Um, if I get the opportunity, I still plan on going and doing a couple videos outside. Hopefully it'll be cool if it's too hot, maybe I'll do one. I do have two Table in the Wilderness videos planned. Anyways, let's get to this message. This is gonna be a short little video. I wanna talk about surviving the tribulation. Is it possible to survive the tribulation? Now, there are going to be many people uh, in the church who will not be raptured. I'm guessing about half the church won't get raptured, and there will be a revival of sorts. Um, some people call it the latter rain. I'm not going to get into that, but I do have a video on the latter rain, and you can find that video here. So some people will repent in the church because they did not have the extra oil. I'm not going to talk about that here. We're talking about surviving. So I'm just trying to stay focused on this subject. But some people will probably get saved who weren't saved, and some people in the church who do not have the extra oil will repent and get that extra oil. Now, can they survive the tribulation? The focus is going to be on this verse here, Revelation 13, 7. And it was given to it to war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to it over every tribe and tongue and nation. So here we see that the Antichrist will be given authority, not only over the earth, but over the saints. But, I do, I, first of all, I do not disagree that the Antichrist will war with the saints. I believe it completely. He will war with them, because it says, and it was given to it to war with the saints. But this doesn't mean he will kill every one of them. How about overcome them? Because the second part was, and it was given to it to war with the saints and to overcome them. In Greek, that word overcome means to conquer, be victorious, overcome, prevail, subdue, from the Greek word Nike, which I've preached before, the, Nic the word the Nicolaitans, if you heard me preach that, and that word means to subdue. You see, the Antichrist is going to have authority over the earth. There is no more salt, and when people start getting the oil and become salty, it's, it's not for the time for the Christians to be preaching all over the whole earth and getting people saved. Some people will be saved. I believe there's gonna be a gospel of the kingdom being gonna be preached, but there's not gonna be great millions of people being saved. Well, I don't know, I'm not gonna say how many people are gonna saved, but we know that the seven year tribulation is going to be a time of, for the Antichrist to rule the earth and for God's judgment to come. It's no longer time for the salt to do its thing. And we have this scripture here, Matthew 24, 22. And unless those days should be shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I've been standing, I've stated this in a couple of my videos, that I believe that some Christians some uh, saints, tribulation saints, will survive due to this verse. Now, some may say, well, this is for the elect, and that the elect is the Jews. Who will be saved? One-third of them will be saved. Two-thirds will die. But the whole nation will turn towards Jesus and accept him as their Lord and Savior. I do not doubt that. However, I do, I do doubt their definition of elect. Ephesians 1, 4, according, according as he has chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The word chose in Greek, again, Ephesians 1, 4, according as he chose us in him. That word chose in Greek is the word, excuse me if I get this wrong, excel, exacto, pretty cool word. It means to pick out for myself Choose, elect, select. Now this is to the Ephesians, not to a group of Jews. So yes, I believe there is a small group of Jews to be saved, one third of the nation, but that has nothing to do with this. 
The elect are those of us who are called to be in Christ. It's the election. It's the predestination. Uh, people talk about that. I, I have my view on it. I believe that God knows who chooses him, who chooses to accept Christ ahead of time. Again, I'm not going to chase that rabbit. We're going to stay on topic. But the elect are all those who accept Christ. Now, is it the Jews and the Gentiles? Is there another name for the Jews who get saved during the tribulation? I don't know. All I know is the elect does include Gentiles because Paul uses that Greek word to the Gentiles, to the Ephesians church in Ephesians 1, 4. Revelation 20, verse 8. And he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of them is as the sand of the sea. Now this verse talks about the end of the millennial reign of Christ. So after the rapture, we have the seven-year tribulation. Well, it could be weeks or months till that starts. We don't know how long. There is a time between the rapture and Daniel 9.27, which starts the tribulation. How long that is, I don't know. But once the tribulation starts, it's the last seven years, then Jesus will come down with the saints, and he will judge the earth. And after the judgment of those who are living, we will rule those of us who are given authority, will rule and reign with Christ on the earth for a thousand years. And here it says, the nations will be deceived. We're not reading all of this. Satan will be released once again, because he'll be put in a, put, a pit for a thousand years. He'll be released, and he's going to deceive the world. And then they're going to come and march on Jerusalem. All right, let's read that verse again. Um, where was it? It was Revelation 28. And he will go out to, here, he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. That word nations, the Greek word is ethnos. If you watch my video videos, I, you've probably heard that before. For nation will rise against nation. That word is ethnos, and that's in the Matthew 24 concerning the beginning of sorrows. The word ethnos is a race, a nation. This is what it means. The nations as distinct from Israel, a race, people, nation, the nations, heathen world, Gentiles. So this isn't a bunch of nations of Jews all over the world who have inherited the earth, but these are Gentile nations that have survived the tribulation and lived in, through the millennial reign of Christ. Because when Jesus comes down and judges them on the earth who have survived, all those who have taken the mark of the beast, he will kill. Not everyone will have taken the mark of the beast. Some will not have. There will be resistances. There will be people who are not Christians and don't worship Satan who will survive. I don't know how, but some will survive. Of course, we know that it says the kings of the east will come to war against uh, the Antichrist, and that's when Jesus is going to show up. So the kings of the east haven't been serving the, uh, the Antichrist, and they didn't take the mark of the beast, but yet the, that army from China, Japan, whatever it is, they will join the Antichrist in attacking Jesus as he comes. But all those soldiers and those armies will be wiped out. But that doesn't mean he's going to wipe out all the people in China and Japan and anywhere else. So anybody who survived the tribulation did not take the mark of the beast, whether saved or not, will be able to live during the tribulation. However, it says here that at the end, many, most of these people will, will turn and be deceived by Satan and come and try to attack Jerusalem. So what I'm saying is there will be people who survive the tribulation and those who have not taken the mark. But I'm not saying this is going to be an easy task. Let's focus now on the Christians, okay? Those who have, who have repented after the rapture. Matthew 10, 23. But, what, but when they persecute you... Oh, well, wrong verse. Sorry, let me go back. Matthew 24, 9. Then they will deliver you up to be afflicted and will kill you, and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 10, 21 and 22. And brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child, and children children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. 
and you will be hated of all men for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end shall be kept safe. So some will be kept safe, okay? And this isn't just Jews. Matthew 10, 23. Now, how are they going to be kept safe? What is, and I've shared this before, so since we're talking about this subject here, surviving the tribulation, this is my advice. If anybody's watching this after the rapture, how do you survive? What are you going to do to help you survive? Here's my advice. Matthew 10, 23. And when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For truly I say to you, in no way shall you have finished the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Now this might be speaking to the Jews, but this, this advice can go to the Gentiles as well. If you're being persecuted, flee. Flee. Okay? Flee. That doesn't mean you're going to survive, but that is a chance of, of, of surviving if you take this advice. One more piece of advice, and this is out of Revelation 13.10. He who leads into captivity will go into captivity. If anyone will kill with a sword, he must be killed by a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. It is not for the Christians to take up the sword during the tribulation. Maybe the, uh, the Antichrist is hunting you down, so you decide to do a guerrilla attack against them. No, no, you take up the sword, you will die by the sword. Even if you try to capture them, it says here, he who leads into captivity will go into captivity. So if you try to capture those who are seeking to take you out, you yourself will be captured. So you're not to take up the sword, you're not to, to try to capture the enemy, your only advice is to flee and hide. And even that will not secure you to survive through the tribulation. Again, we're going back to Revelation 13, 7. And it was given to it to war with the saints. It is the Antichrist. And it was given to it to war with the, to war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given it to it over every tribe and tongue and nation. This is not going to be a pleasant time. I am in no way saying that. Most Christians, most tribulation saints will die or be thrown in prison and they will be told, take the mark of the beast or here, we're going to chop off your head. Okay? Most are not going to survive. How many will? I don't know. But I'm going to say a small percentage. A small percentage. I don't know how many. The Antichrist has authority. He's going to overcome them. To overcome them, that means he's going to have a victory over them. Is it going to be a complete victory? No. We have evidence here in Scripture that some will survive. It's going to be a tough time, folks. Revelation 6, 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Unto when, Master, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And white robes were given to each one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little time, until both their fellow servants and their brothers, those about to be killed as they were, should have their number made complete. That's the fifth seal. That's the martyrdom of the saints. It is a seal. It is ordained by God. It is the time for the Antichrist to rule. Yes, some will survive. Even those who are not Christians who oppose the Antichrist, some will survive and not take the mark of the beast. We have evidence in Scripture. I don't think there's going to be many left, but they will repopulate the earth. They'll have a thousand years to do so. Now, I talked about the video, beginning of this video that I had a video talking about the latter rain. I also have another video that I created afterwards that has more details about the timing of this revival. And if you want to see that video, you can find it here. It's called Revival and Prosperity. Most of that is focusing on revival, but I also speak against the prosperity gospel, which is, I think, the last third of that video. And that, that video will give you many scriptures concerning the revival, how it'll take place, when it'll take place, and all the scriptures that go with it. All right, that will complete this video today, and we'll see you again soon, Lord willing. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.
hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to keep up to date with all the videos from gospel-kingdom.com, I recommend subscribing to this YouTube channel by clicking on the gold cross sword in the pink area in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Thank you, have a good day, and God bless.